All right, moving along now to talk about the, the next section is like how I do it, so there'll be pictures and videos. This one will be on nipple sparing mastectomy. Uh, I just wanted, before I show the video of one of my patients who I had, I just wanted to talk a little bit about a lot of changes that have happened in the last couple years about candidates for nipple sparing mastectomy. Um, I would say about four or five years ago in fellowship, uh, in surgical oncology, we had like these meetings where all the sites participate. And at that time, the indications for nipple sparing mastectomy were more rigid. So I remember like a lot of the leaders in the field during these sessions would say things like if the tumor was uh, greater than three centimeters, if it was in two centimeters from the nipple areolar complex, these were patients who uh, were not considered candidates for nipple sparing mastectomy. A lot of that has changed. Uh, this is very nice. Uh, it's not really, a con it's sort of a consensus conference, not so much a statement where they polled a lot of uh, breast surgeons uh, internationally on many different questions. There's about 40 questions. There's no time to go over all of them. It ranges everything from the workup of patients getting a nipple sparing mastectomy to the oncologic surgery to plastic surgery, things like that. But here, when you read these responses, so the bolder dark color as it goes across is percentages of yeses, and then there's maybes or like undetermined, uh, and then noes. So this particular question was nipple, mastectomy, nipple sparing mastectomy can be performed for any tumor size that does not involve the skin or nipple areolar complex independent of axillary status. So you can see there's a big shift in the people who are doing this from back four or five years ago when you know, there was certain more size limitations. Uh, there's more of a push towards locally advanced cancers, even without the use of neoadjuvant chemotherapy, much more after neoadjuvant chemotherapy, especially if there's a response. Certainly early breast cancer fits with the recommendations from several years ago. If it's small, far away from the nipple area or complex, it's really safe. Um, DCIS, risk-reducing setting, um, and then specialized surgeons. So, but again, this is, there's, this I think is a really good resource for anyone interested in knowing some of the changes of nipple sparing mastectomy. Uh, these opinions are born out of a lot of recent studies. They're all retrospective, but you can see as time goes on, the end size keeps increasing. And many of these studies have shown oncologic safety. So the local occurrence rate is akin to what we would consider uh, the same for non-nipple areolar sparing mastectomies or just skin sparing or simple mastectomies, 5% or less. And what's interesting is most of the recurrences don't actually come at the nipple areolar complex site. So many uh, oftentimes they'll come up more superiorly, like if the dissection, if you're doing an inframammary fold, which 